Hi everybody, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to do a system design interview for social media applications like Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. This is the format we're going to follow. So let's get started. Functional requirements. So when you open your Facebook or Instagram, first thing you want to do is to see your newsfeed. So first requirement is view newsfeed. And then we want to be able to create a post that can include just text or it can also include pictures or videos. You also want to be able to like and comment on a post shared by another user. Also want to be able to search for your friends. Also follow other users. So your system design interview is going to be one hour interview. So you don't want to waste any time on things like create a user profile, etc. So you can call those things out as assumptions. Talk about non-functional requirements. When you like somebody's post or, or you add a comment to someone's post, you want to immediately see that your comment has been posted. So we want low latency for that. Also, when you're searching for users or your friends, you want the search result to come faster. So you want low latency there as well. For view posts, we want to go for eventual consistency because when a user creates a post, it's okay if the second user is seeing the post in a few minutes. Let's talk about capacity estimation. Instagram has total 2 billion monthly active users. You can find daily active users by dividing 2 billion by 30 days. Say 50% of the user post three times a month. So 50% is 1 billion multiply by three posts divide by 30 days. That gives us the total number of posts per day. Now let's write 1 billion as 10 power 9 multiply by 3 divide by 30. That's 10 power 8 posts per day, which is 100 million posts per day. Now let's assume that average size of a post is about 10 MB. Calculate storage requirements by 100 million posts per day multiplied by 10 MB per post, which is equal to 100 terabyte storage per day. So when I posted my last video, some of you reached out and asked me, why are we doing this calculation? And the answer is to understand what kind of storage costs you have to plan for and what kind of storage options you want to choose from. Now let's talk about database design. Let's start with user database. Since the user information is pretty structured in nature, we, we can choose SQL database. We will have user, user ID as the primary key. We'll have username as string, first name and last name also as string, user's email address and phone number, followed by when the user profile was created and when was the last time user logged in. So the user database will store the information, basic information for each user. It will not store the information like user one is friends with user two. So we will create a connection database to track that information. So if we are designing Facebook where user one is sending a friend request to user two and when the user two accepts that both are each other's friends. So in that case, we will use undirected graph. But if you're designing something like Instagram, where user one can follow user two, that doesn't mean that user two is also following user one. So in that case, we will use directed graphs. So let's talk about the post database. When a user is creating the post, it can either have some text or a media file like a picture or a video. Basically, this information is pretty structured in nature, so we can use SQL database. So in the post database, we will have post ID as the unique ID. We will have user ID as the foreign key to identify which user has created this post. And we will have date and time on which the user created this post. That way we can display user's post in chronological order. Description field will capture any text user is writing as part of the post. If there are images or videos in the post, we will use an object storage to store those kind of files and link to those objects will be stored in the post database. When users interact with a post by liking it or adding a comment to it, we're going to store that information in the interaction database. I'm choosing a NoSQL database here. You can also use SQL here, but when the comments get nested, meaning one user added a comment and then multiple users starts res responding to that comment, um, and it keeps getting nested, then the SQL can get a little tricky. So we're going to stick with NoSQL here. We will store the post ID to see which post is the user interacting with. And then we'll store user ID to see which user is interacting with this post. We will store a Boolean for tracking whether a user has liked the post or not. Comment field for tracking the comment text. 
if the users are reacting with emojis then we will store the link to emojis file as media hey guys real quick um, I'm spending a lot of time making these videos um, and my intention behind this is to share what I've learned so far uh, and hopefully it helps somebody but if you're finding these videos helpful, can you please give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel? That way I at least know that these videos are, are helpful to you guys and continue to make more videos for you. Thank you. Let's talk about the APIs. Is get feed service. It's a get method. We will pass the user ID as a parameter. The service will return top 20 posts as the news feed. Next one is create post service. It's a post method. We will pass the user ID indicating which user is creating the post, the media object for the post, and description. It will return a Boolean value to indicate whether a post was created or not. Next one is interaction service. Passing the post ID to indicate which post the comments are being added to. User ID indicating which user is adding the comment, indicating whether a user liked the post or not media attachment in case user has reacted with emojis it will return true if the comment is successfully posted and false if not this one is search service user will search for a string we will pass that string to this service and the service will return top 30 search results the last one is follow service we will pass two user ids user id 1 and user id 2 indicating user 1 is following user 2 also a post method which will establish the link between user 1 and user 2 in the graph database now let's do the high-level system design for small user base and then we will scale it. user opens the Facebook or Instagram app, it will automatically call get feed service and pass that user's ID as the parameter. Service will extract user's friends from the connection database, retrieve their latest posts from the post database post has image or video that will be stored as a separate object into an object storage something like Amazon S3. The get feed service will also retrieve the objects to display it on users feed. When we are generating the feed using the get feed service the post can also have likes and comments to it so the get feed service also has to retrieve that information from the interaction database. Next, we also want user to be able to create posts. So for that, we have create post service. This service will add the post information into the post database, but images and videos will be uploaded separately. There can be malwares or viruses in the image or video attachments. So we will use upload media service to scan those files. This will be an internal service not exposed to users. Once the scanning is complete, the images and video files can be uploaded to object storage. Once the media files are successfully uploaded, the link to those files will be added to the post database so that the get feed service can retrieve those files when retrieving the posts. So once the post is created, you want to show that post to user's friends. So create post service will call fan out service, which will distribute user's post to that user's friends when they're retrieving the feeds. When other users will see those posts, they will like or comment using the interaction service and that interactions will be stored in the interaction database we will use search service to find his or her friends this will search for that user in the user database but also look at the graph database which is the connection database to, to find friends of friends and display them on the top of the search result the user has found the friend they can follow them using the follow service the follow service will establish a link between, between the user and his friends that he just found using the search. Scale this design for millions of users. First, we will add load balancers to make sure that load is evenly distributed across different servers. Now, load balancer can be a single point of failure. So instead of one, we will also have a second standby load balancer. Know more about single point of failure, check out this video here. Okay, we can cache the feed for the users who frequently log in in short period of time. We also want to make sure that multiple instances of each services are running so that if one instance of the service goes down, we have um, other instances of the service able to carry on the load. 
example, we only have one instance of each database. So in case something happens and one of the databases crashes, then we will lose that user's information. So we will have multiple replicas for each of our databases. Right now, the create post service is passing the media object to upload media service. So if the upload media service is not ready to take the next request, then the create post service has to wait. So in order to eliminate those dependency between the two services, we will add the messaging queue. So whenever the po create post service is done, uh, it can just simply add the media to the queue and the upload media service can pick up the request from the queue. Our post database is going to be read heavy. There are gonna be more people looking at the feed than the number of people adding or creating posts. So the post database is going to be read heavy and we wanna make sure that it performs right. So we will archive all the posts older than six months or one year into an archive post database. Also create a bad job that will archive media files or the objects associated with the posts that were six months or a year older. If we're using Amazon S3 for storing our media files, then we will use the Amazon S3 intelligent tiering files older than six months will automatically get moved to a different storage class that is cheaper. For the search service, instead of directly querying the database for the string, we can use Elasticsearch for better performance. We can also cache the results for frequently searched queries. For the celebrity users who have millions of followers all over the world, we will store those users' posts into a content distribution network that can easily distribute those posts across the world to all the users and directly display it on their timeline. We'll have to do a special consideration for the celebrity users when we are doing the database sharding. These users end up in the same database shard, then you have over 1.3 billion followers trying to access the post for these users. That, that's gonna crash your database. So we can either give a separate database shard to each celebrity user or we can pair them with least active users.